Welcome to July's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is course schedule 2. There are total n courses you have to take labeled 0 to n minus 1. Some courses may have prerequisites. For example, to take course 0, you have to take course 1, which is expressed as a pair 0, 1. Given the total number of courses and list of prerequisite pairs, return the ordering of courses you should take to finish all courses. There may be multiple correct orders, so you just need to return one of them. If it's impossible to finish all courses, then return an empty array. So this uh, question was given to us before, but that one asked, I believe it was whether you could finish all these courses or not. So you could just return true or false. This one, they want to us to return an array of the order that we would need to take to take all these courses, or at least one possible order. So the approach that I think you're gonna have to take here is something called a topological sort, or also known as Kahn's algorithm. And to explain that, I'm gonna to go to the whiteboard. So here's a representation of my course schedule with the prerequisites before the class that you can take. So in order to take class 7, you have to take class 3. To take class 3, you have to take class 0, so on and so forth. So this is a directed acyclic graph, right? Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a depth first search, but there's a twist. And I'll show you how we could twist our depth for search a little bit to get the course schedule that we would need to take to take all the classes. So first thing we want to do is have some sort of visited set in order to mark where we've been before. So this can be a dictionary or it can be a set, whatever. Next we need a stack. And this stack is what's going to allow us to track where we've been and how we could uh, schedule our classes. So let's start with class zero. We start with class 0, and we see which ways we can go. We can go 3 or 5. So let's start with going by 3, do a depth first search. Then we can go to class 4, say. And this is where our depth first search ends, because there's nowhere else to go. So when it ends, add that to the stack. So we'll add 4. And all the while, we'll be marking these as visited. So we'll be marking 0. We visited here. Uh, we visited 3. And now we visited 4, right? Now we go back in our depth for search, right? But here's the twist. When we see that there's another branch that was possible, we first go that branch first. So start with going to 7. We can add that to the stack. Mark that as, as visited. And now we go back to 3, right? And now since there's nowhere else to go, we add that to the stack. Now 0, there's still another branch we can go. We can go to 5. So we go back here. All the while we'll be marketing, mark these as visited. So we go to 5. And finally, we write 0, right? Now we go to number 1. And we can see that we can go to 0, but we've already visited here. So forget forget 0. We've already visited that. So let's move on to the next one. Now we're going to be at 2. Go to 6. Now that ends, so add that to the stack. And we'll mark that as visited. And now we're at 2. Mark that as visited. And finally, 1. So notice something interesting here. This path is the reverse way of how we could take every class marking every prerequisite. We can take 1, then we can take 2, uh, then we can take 6, then we can take 0, then we can take 5, then 3, then 7, and 4. So that's one possibility of how we could take every single class marking every prerequisite, right? So that's all we need to do. Uh, it's just a depth first search while we mark all these visited nodes. It's kind of like we go down and then uh, as we move back, we try to see what other paths there are, all the while adding to our stack. So that's great. But there's a twist as well. What if there's a cycle? Because this all assumes that it's a directed acyclic graph, but it might not be. It, it clearly says that there might not be a possible way. So to do that, if you've seen my last video before, um, we'll have to have some other method of tracking each path. And what we'll do is, while we're going down here, we'll be marking each one, 0, 3, 7. And if at any point we find that the next node that we're visiting, say that we're at 3, and now we see that we've already been at 0 before, then we can say, hey, cycle exists. So if a cycle exists, then there's no possible way we can do all these, all these courses. So we'll return an empty list. So we need some sort of way to mark if a cycle exists inside of our entire set. And each time we move down this tracker, the, vis the difference between the visited one is as we move back, since there could be multiple paths, like from 2 to 0, something like that, uh, we'll have to pop off 
every single one we visited each time we move back. So when we go zero, three, then four, as we move back to go to three, we pop four back off. Then we say, oh, okay, seven, and so on. So there's going to be two tracking mechanisms, one visited for this topological sort and one for the tracking to see if there's a cycle. Okay, so now that we have our intuition, let's go ahead and code this out. The first thing we want to do is initialize an adjacency list because this is going to be the representation of where you can go from each course. So to do that, I'm just going to make a list of list for whatever in range of num courses. Now for each course and pre in prerequisites, we're going to take the list for pre and append whatever course comes next after that. So this is at the end going to have every course in each index and all the courses it can go to after afterwards. So that's going to be our agency list. Now we want to initialize a couple variables. We want to first have our stack to keep track of all the courses that we've been at the very end. We'll have our visited set. We'll also have our tracker set. And that should be it. Now we want our depth for search method, right? And what we'll pass in here is the node we're at, the visited set, the tracker, as well as the stack. Okay, so uh, the very first thing we want to do is put in this node to, into our visited set. So get our visited set, visited, and add the node. Now for the next class that it can take, for next in a JNC list, for this node, we first check have we been here before? So if this next um, not in visited, then we could re uh, call our recursion or depth for search. So that's going to be DFS, so on and so forth. Now, one thing is we also need to add it to our tracker uh, because we need to remember, um, we need to keep track of whether there's a cycle or not, right? So uh, let me add that as well. We're going to add that to our tracker and we'll say if this next one is in our tracker, then we want to mark some sort of variable to say a cycle exists. And I'm going to make that a self variable, kind of like a global variable. And we'll say that false at first. Uh, but if we find that we've, um, repeated a node inside of our tracker, then we could just mark this as true. So that way we'll know a cycle exists. In fact, we can probably break there, but uh, I won't do that for now. Um, just one thing to note is we'll also need to pop it off here after we're finished. And finally, once we're through with all that, if we're at the end and there's nowhere else to go, then we want to append the node to our stack. Now we want to do this for each one of our nodes, right? So for, I guess, node in range of num courses, we're going to call our depth for search for each one node. Um, that's in the visited tracker and the stack. But one thing is only if we hasn't haven't vis visited yet. So if node not in visited, then we go ahead and run that. So finally, we just return our stack, but well, we need to reverse everything. Um, you could pop it off and put it into a, another list as well if you'd like, but no real need to, just make it reversed. Um, one thing though, if we do detect a cycle, then we want to return just an empty list. So that's going to indicate to us there's a cycle here, so we can't finish this. So return an empty list to take care of that. So let's go ahead and submit this. See if I've messed anything up. I have. All right. We want to add that here, not there. It's my fault. Okay, so so far so good. Let's go ahead and submit that. 
and we did get accepted. Now I realize this is a little bit ugly. Um, I could probably have coded this out better and there's better solutions for this than this, but this helped me kind of combine the solution from my last question with the course schedule and combine it with this topological sort or also known as, I believe it's cons algorithm. Um, but this allowed it and it got accepted. So I'm just gonna go with this approach and made the most sense to me. Hopefully that explains the basic problem well enough and um, you can improve it. If you can find better solutions and improve it, then that's great. All right, so thanks for watching my channel and remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.